I know what he was saying about me, and I'm telling you, it's not true. No, <laughs> see, this is why you can't keep people. You work them to death, and then you treat them like this. No, I'm going, Kyle. No, I'm going. I'm going. Listen, call me after the holidays, and you can reprimand me all you want. Okay? Goodbye, Kyle. What do you got there? It's an invitation to a Christmas party. There's one for you and one for me. Look, your name's on it. What the Christmas party? Grandma's. I told you she was doing this. <laughs> Look, I, and I told you back then I didn't think it was a good idea, and I don't think it's a good idea now. It's a great idea. Now. When is it? Christmas Eve. Oh, of course. Tomorrow. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, she wasn't considerate to me when she was alive. Why should she do it now? <sighs> All right. Look. Look. I'm sorry. Okay, I shouldn't have said that. It's just that I've never really been welcome into the family with open arms. She liked you. She told me she did. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's not going to tell you I'm a loser. She cared about you. You're not a loser. I know I'm not a loser. It's just that that's what I thought she thought of me, okay? Like, I'm, I'm really glad that you had that bond with her, you know? It's just that she never made any attempt whatsoever to have that with me. I think you're wrong. Well, you know what? I'm going to take you to the party, okay? I'll take you to the party, and either I can pick you up or your mom can come get you if she's even there. She's going to be there, and so are you. This is mandatory. <laughs> mandatory? I never heard about mandatory Christmas party. Well, now you have. <sighs> no, I've already left the office for the day. No, this is something you can handle. This is your job. Can you, can you just do it? Okay. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Idiot. You had to rush it, didn't you? You just had to rush it. You know you don't have to do this. I love him, and I'm going to marry him. You just need to accept that. You are making a huge mistake. I am not having this argument with you. You know what? Walk me down the aisle. Do it. If you don't, don't. Well, I appreciate the option. As we all prepare for Christmas, I've heard some rumors that some of you aren't exactly happy with my decor here. So before we all go home and celebrate this time with our families, it is now time to speak or forever hold your peace. Maggie, you have something to say? I just don't think that people are taking Christmas seriously enough and have totally lost the meaning. Okay, uh, what's the meaning? You know what the meaning is. The meaning is different for everyone. This is not a cut and dry thing. All right, I'm just gonna say it. You have been forcing your own personal beliefs and lifestyle into our religion. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. You've heard the Bible's open to interpretation? I have. 
but you've been mixing materialism into your sermon. You've been encouraging people to look at that tree and think about gifts rather than focus on Jesus. Well, Maggie, I just want to let you know I appreciate your words and your position. You need to sit down, Maggie. You don't like it here, get out. There are other churches, you know. That's not the answer, Rick. Look, and no one is being forced out. This is just a difference of opinion, that's all. Now, Maggie, you may not believe this, but you and I are on the same page. But Christmas is and always has been about love. You know, the presents, the tree, the lights. It's just icing on the cake. It's just celebrating the gift we were given and the gift of family. Enjoy this time. Understand its meaning and appreciate the unity we all feel during this time. Christmas isn't a compromise. Religion isn't a compromise. Listen to me, people. This isn't right. My sister attends the Church of Saints, and they celebrate Christmas the way it should be. Not like this. Not like he wants us to. Well, I appreciate your position, Maggie. And I'm sorry you don't approve of the way that I show and celebrate my faith. Well, sorry might be a start, but it isn't enough, is it? You know, Maggie, it's not always just about you. Merry Christmas. She's disruptive and disrespectful. You know you could kick her out. Yeah, but I shouldn't burden another church with it. I wonder why she's so bitter. Well, it's just a different perspective. She thinks she's doing the right thing, and I guess I can't fault her there, but she doesn't make the job easy, <laughs> does she? No, she does not. I want to commend you on your speech today about family and Christmas unity. It really hit close to home. Even more so for you, though. What's that supposed to mean? What's this? Read it. I can't believe she, I, I can't believe mom did this. She was never happy that you disconnected with the family. Disconnected with my father, not the family. You know you've not gone out of your way to see them. You know that. This looks like a good opportunity to practice that family Christmas unity thing you were just talking about. You're not funny. This isn't funny. You need to go. We need to go. Besides, it's mandatory. You can't make an invitation mandatory. What about jury duty? That's different. They're not inviting you. They're telling you you're going. And if I had jury duty, I probably wouldn't see my father. What will you be wearing to your family party? I can set it out for you. Straight jacket? Gonna need one after this. I might as well come prepared. Can I talk to you for a second? Of course, Natalie. So how can I help you? I just wanted to tell you that what you said today was so amazing. It really was. I don't know why it was so different than any other day. For some reason, when you walked up there and you started to speak, it felt like you were talking directly to me. It's like you knew my whole situation. Could you elaborate a little bit more? Like what in my sermon impacted you? Oh, my dad, he, um, he lost his job. Every year, we would get this Christmas tree. It'd be so big and beautiful, but we didn't this year. I got curious, so I asked him why. He broke down. I felt so bad. I wanted to tell him that it wasn't about the presence of the tree. I couldn't find the words. But then you walked up there, and you started to speak. It's like you found all the right words. 
I just wish my dad was here with me, because I know for a fact you could help him too. You and your dad are always welcome. Anytime you want to sit down and speak with us, we're here. I know times are tough, Natalie. Everyone keeps getting hit with this economy that just keeps nose diving. But we're available. You know, and that's what church is. Church is a community. We take care of each other. We love each other. So anytime you and your dad want to speak, we are here. Thank you. Um, I think you just might do that. I still wish he was here to hear what you said first and. Well, you can probably relay that message to him. Now, you're a pretty good speaker. You could probably convince him a lot quicker than I could. And I know you'll have a wonderful Christmas because you'll have your family and you have that huge heart. I really appreciate you talking to us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Now, you say you don't have a Christmas tree this year. Oh, no. Well, you do now. What time should we deliver it? Oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. I know we don't have to. I want to. What time? I'll be home in 30 minutes. We'll be there in 30 minutes with the tree. Thanks. And by we, you mean me. That's right. You're always volunteering me for things. I'm getting the impression you want me out of the house. Oh, I was hoping it wasn't that obvious. I'll help you load the truck. No. What do we tell the congregation about the tree? Hmm. I was thinking of blaming the Grinch or a Grinch copycat. Oh. Lie to them. Good idea, honey. I'm starting to think you're becoming a bad influence on me. It's a good deed. The good outweighs the bad. All right. Let's take it down. Oh, and on the way home, we'll steal some flat screens and give those to the needy. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this whole holiday season's got me in a very creative mood. I think we should have made this place more festive. What do you mean? We got a tree. So, I got something very interesting in the mail today. I told them. I did not subscribe to that magazine. I have no idea how they got my name and address. <laughs> no, seriously, it's from my mom. I thought your mom passed away. She did, but she left something behind. An invitation? Mm-hmm. Any money in the envelope? Uh, no. She sent one to everyone in the family, I guess. You want to go? Well, of course I want to go, but our car won't make it. It's got a fighting chance. A fighting chance? It's three hours of highway driving on a car that should have been dead ten years ago. And plus, the inspection sticker's like, what, six months overdue? Nobody looks at those. Oh, yes, they do. You know I want to go, but there's no real way of going. Don't give up hope yet, Allie. There are always Christmas miracles. Christmas miracles. So, like, I ask and I shall receive? You'll see. Tell me the reason you want this. The reason is for you and the family to find reason. What is that supposed to mean? You'll see. You need this just as much as the others do. So you want me to be in the center of all their anger. Is that what you want? I know. We can, we can, we should rent a hall and, and, and we can send them there, invite them there. Send them to a hall? And not you? No. They weren't raised in a hall, Richard. They were raised here. We're having it here. What about Kathy? What about her? You know. She's your daughter. You burned that bridge, and I want you to start rebuilding it. It's gone. Ashes. That's what you think. That's what I know. That's what she told me. She told me more than that. She told me to shove something somewhere. And did you try that? No, it was impossible anyway. I need you to mail these. I won't be here to do it. I'm trusting you to do it. This isn't going to work. These kinds of things have to happen naturally. This is going to be messy. Messy or not, it's happening. Promise me you'll mail these. 
promise me. I promise. And promise me the house will be festive. And I mean festive. I promise I will make it festive. Look how happy we were in that picture. Don't you wish we could just go back to that point in time for a day or an hour? I would, I would like to tack on some more time right now instead. Finally, guys, this is it, boys. <laughs> what? What is it? 1987. It's from season four, episode 36, <laughs> The Vanna White in Spain. All original packaging, unopened, hardly any creases. <laughs> it's not a doll. <laughs> what did you pay for that? It was only $300. It was a steal. 300 bucks? You spent 300 bucks on a doll? Dude, you give me 300 bucks, I go down to the local Walmart, I fill up my entire carriage with better looking things than that. You, my friend, got hosed. You can't find this at Walmart, and you're not a collector, you don't understand. This is every man's dream all wrapped up in one box. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Bob, mm. how many times do I have to tell you to stop going through my mail? I think you've got a Christmas card. Bob, that's ridiculous. Nobody likes me enough to send me a Christmas card. This is insane. Hey, you, you guys remember all those times I told you I don't have a family, I'm an orphan? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Are you guys serious? Yeah. And never mind, it doesn't matter. My, my family found me. It turns out I do have a family. I have to go to a Christmas party next week. <laughs> you have a Christmas party to go to? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a scam, man. It's not a scam. What do you think? <laughs> That's my golden ticket. I finally have a family. <laughs> Sorry, man. That's a scam. It's just like the golden ticket thing in the movies. It's not a scam. They send it to your address. You go out. You try to claim your prize. And before you know it, Oompa Loompas are carrying it off, man. It's a scam. What do you think, Bob? I was scammed once. I met this girl online. I sent her some money. She never called me back. Why, though? Why? Why? Why wouldn't she just call me back? Look at me. I'm like an eight. That is not the same thing as this. I got a family. I like to solve the puzzle. I love you. Are you going to invite me in? Well, that's why you're here, right? I'm here for mom. Get this out of the way and then leave you to your own happy world. So Richard, what have you been up to? It's been a while. With retirement, everything is the same. Day after day, the same. Well, this is certainly a strange one. Mom had an odd sense of humor to set this one up. Your mother wanted the family together one more time. She was always an optimist. Which is hard considering who she married. I don't want this to be an attack dad party, you got it? One of those is really overdue, isn't it? We never really did talk after the wedding. Or after your divorce. Oh, here we go. And whose car is this? Ours, for tonight anyway. Well, where'd you get it? Uh, boss loaned it to me. Greg, the same Greg that hates you. Why would he loan you his car? He has a heart. 
He knows we're in a bind and wants to help us out. We just, you don't gotta be careful. I can't picture him in the heart. I guess I'll take whatever I can get. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in. We got a party to get to. Hello? We brought brownies! Oh, these are good. Oh, at least there's one good thing about tonight. Mm. It's good to see you, Kathy. Oh my God, I'm sorry. It's good to see you too, Phil. Good to see you too, Debbie. Yeah, it's been a while. We haven't seen each other since... The funeral. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it's, it's nice to see you now. This is an awkward situation, isn't it? You can say that again. Mm -hmm. I don't see any alcohol anywhere, do you? Yeah, I'm sure we can find where Dad is hiding his stash. I'm sure there's bottles just about everywhere in this thing. If they're not empty by now. Is he here? Yeah, where else would he be? He's already on my nerves. As things change, they stay the same. Hmm. Interesting idea Mom had. You can say that again. So, how long are we supposed to be here tonight? Midnight. It said it on the invite. It said midnight. We can't leave until then. The invite clearly said we are to remain here until midnight. This just keeps getting better and better. <sighs> What's wrong with her face? It's nothing, Allie. Don't worry about it. You know you can tell me anything. What's wrong? I had an argument with my dad. He wanted to hang out tonight. When he found out I was hanging with you instead, he blew up. You know how he is. Yeah, sure. I see food. I don't see any beer. I don't drink anymore. Or any less, I'm guessing. Where's the beer? I told you I don't drink anymore. I'm clean. I've been six months sober. Your mother thought it'd be a good idea to stop after she passed. Now, it might have been a good idea to do so before she passed, but I'm glad you're away from it now. I tried to set this place up the way Mom wanted it. There's food and there's beverages, and if you really have to drink, there's a liquor store down the road. I might need to drink. Then do it! Yeah, I'm glad you're still so incredibly happy with life. That's rare. That's a rare thing. Well, I'm glad you're so incredibly amused. Yeah, he can cut the tension with a knife in here. Guess uh, you still don't like me very much, do you? Hi, honey. How you doing? Good, Mom. I'm so happy you came. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Come on, this is gonna be a great night. Hey, Aunt Debbie. Hey there. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, this place could use a little Christmas cheer. Uh, what's going there, Phil? Richard? What are you doing here? Well, I got the Christmas mandate just like everyone else. You're not family and I don't want you here. Whoa, 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 whoa. hey, wouldn't that do like that? You're not gonna get the present that I brought you. You're, you're just close to being on my naughty list. Get out of my house. Oh. I'm wondering, Tom, where is your 15-year-old girlfriend, or whatever age she is? She's 22. Hmm. Is that a Barbie dream house in that bag for her? Nah, she's already got one of those, and she's got the Corvette, too. Hmm. <laughs> Midlife crisis is real, huh? I couldn't tell you. I'm not middle-aged. Nope. I, you know, I, I, I read a study where people are living longer. Yeah, so that means people like us, our age, we're considered young again. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to report, but you look very middle-aged. When you're with your girlfriend, it looks like a grandpa taking his granddaughter to get ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy, I got some good news for you. Yeah, she dumped me. Imagine that. <laughs> oh, yeah, she got mad because all I would do is take her to bingo games, you know? And then, uh... She's a little sick of me wanting to cuddle with her during Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. 
about, uh, about you. Where's that big doofus that used to be on your arm? Big doof? Yeah, yeah, the guy that was built like an ox, probably as smart as one. Well, Tom, he was a lawyer, and he wasn't an idiot. <laughs> a lawyer. That freak show. We're not together anymore. He wasn't much for conversation. Yeah, what do you expect from a caveman? This place looks great. I love what you've done with the decorations. Yeah, I do have to give him credit. He did make it look the way it used to. Mom would be happy with this, but probably not him. Mom loved everyone, big and small. Yeah, she hated that short guy. What? Yeah, yeah, that, that short guy. Remember when Allie was dating that midget? Huh? She, she called him a, a loser and useless. My mother never referred to anyone as useless. And she never hated anyone. No, she hated that guy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's right. She hated that little guy who wasn't the M word. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, I wonder if he's allowed to r ride the uh, amusement park rides. What do you think? since I've been here. Thank you so much for bringing me home. I'm glad I could do it for you. Nervous? I'm not as nervous as you. What's going on? You've been weird the whole ride here. I'm just not big up family gatherings. Well, don't worry about it. It is cold outside, so let's go. Yeah. Hey, babe. Uh, hey, um, we need to talk. OK, let's go inside and talk. Well, that's the thing. Um, my mother is, is really not comfortable with you coming inside. You told me she was. You I, told me she wanted to meet me. Well, yeah, but... I bought this freaking gift I, for her. Well, I'll give it to her. <sighs> That's not right. That's not right, honey. Don't call me honey. <laughs> and you know what's not right? What's not right is you inviting me over to meet your family and then kicking me the hell out before I even step foot in the door because your mommy is afraid to meet me. Okay, so my mom is not afraid to meet you. She just doesn't think it's a good idea for me to be in a serious relationship right now. <laughs> That's sad. But I'm happy. You're happy? I, I mean, I must have been so desperate to date you. I, I don't even know what why I found you ever attractive. <sighs> is that all? You're a geek. Are you done? You're a mama's boy. Okay, so you know, you can leave. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. The only thing I wish is that I had bought your mother a better gift. She's gonna need it. It yeah. runs on batteries. You know what? She's right about you. You're trash. You're nothing but trash. <gasps> I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue you. Go ahead. Run back to mommy. I hope you have a terrible Christmas. Go bang a reindeer, mama's boy. Santa, I need your help tonight. Let me tell you something. You want to be happy in life? Sales should never be considered as a career. Avoid it. I'm tired of sticking my head up the ass of some dimwit just to pay the mortgage. Yeah, avoid insurance too. My company made a ton of cuts and now I'm on the road. And when I'm not on the road, I'm working the phone center. I got this big title and I'm jockeying a phone. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You go door to door and sell insurance? No. I go company to company and tell them why it's a good idea to have our insurance. So we're kind of like Tom here. We didn't choose our careers very well. Mm. What about you, Jeremy? How are you and Allie doing? Good, good. You know, she's still rocking it and I'm doing grunt work. Laying down carpets, painting walls, bringing stuff up ladders, like a robot. Mm. <laughs> An unhappy robot, but I gotta turn a buck like everyone else. <laughs> Yeah, just in, until Allie becomes a rock star, right? Yeah. yeah. You might want to have a backup plan in case that whole rock star thing doesn't work out. We live for the day, my friends. There's no need to stress the bills or the future. Cut out the hunt for money, the need to fit into that society box. You live happier. And poorer. <laughs> Hey, Santa. What happened to your sleigh? 
I don't know. The dashboard's been lit, lit up like this for months. So maybe you shouldn't be driving it then? Maybe you should have gotten it fixed, right? What do you mean? It's the Christmas season. It's like having a built-in Christmas tree in my dashboard. Except that Christmas tree is crippling your vehicle. Do you need a ride? Actually, tonight of all nights, I really do need a ride. Believe it or not, I just found out three days ago I have a family. I gotta go meet them tonight for the first time. Where? You have to meet them? Hampstead, New Hampshire. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll drop you off. I would not want to get in the way of Santa Claus meeting his family for the first time. Just drop me off? What about the way home? Oh, I'm sure you'll find some newfound relatives to give you a ride home. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I'm really bad at first impressions. So what are we going to do about your truck? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry about that. I got it covered. <clears throat> How's that? I got this parking ticket a couple years ago. You know, anytime my truck breaks down, I just throw it throw on the windshield wiper. Cops don't even worry about it. They think I already got a ticket. That's clever, I guess. Here you go, hold these. Planning a good night, I see. I mean, every night's a good night. Are you always this positive? I mean, no. I get pretty irritated, quiet sometimes. You know, everyone always tells me I look constipated. You know, a couple of times I've been constipated and irritated at the same time, but <laughs> I mean, that's rare when that happens. <laughs> hmm. So what are you doing tonight? Oh, my night's wide open. I just broke up with my boyfriend. It's no loss, though. I just don't know why I gravitate towards weirdos all the time. Obviously, your luck's changing. How's that? I mean, you met me. You have to be behind this party here. No, Grandma did that. Mm, but you might have been in your ear about it. Maybe, but isn't it a great idea? I mean, getting everyone together. I guess, but your mother keeps giving me the evil eye. Go talk to her. Oh. This is a party. There should be laughs. Mm, laughs. All right. Hi. Hi. Still angry with me, I see. Let's not discuss it, okay? We'd have a much better time if we both smiled like we're having a good time, and then we can go back to our lives after the party. Well, I was thinking that maybe, finally, we could bury the hatchet. That's easy for you to say. You need to sit back and look at the entire picture. You haven't apologized. You've completely ignored my calls. Look, I'm here now, and I'm trying to make it right. I know I owe you, and I know I've screwed you over. I'm trying to pay you back. It's not a money thing, Allie. You lied to me. And now you bring him here? He's my boyfriend. The same boyfriend you ran from and ended up on my doorstep. You know what? You're right. You're always right. Maybe we should just pretend that this is the best night ever, the best family ever, and just go on with our normal lives later. Mm. It's more awkward than I anticipated. No, this is basically what I expected. I'm trying, Jeanette. I'm trying. Merry Christmas, family. <laughs> Merry Christmas. This evening has been everything that I wanted it to be. I'm happier than a kid opening an Atari. Whatever the hell they're opening these days. Big fan of Christmas? I mean, yeah, who isn't? It's the best holiday of the year. I like Halloween. I mean, yeah, I get that. All the candy. You got the little kids dressed like ghouls. And you know those little, those little candles they put inside the pumpkins? Mm. Yeah, I like those too. So what's with the Santa get up? Oh, I'm, I'm a part-time mall Santa. I work at least 14 hours a week. I'm 
I'm surprised to see Tom here. Not as surprised as I am. I think Mom threw in a few surprises just to annoy us. Was he really invited? Mom used to say, once you're family, you're always family. What do you think the end game of this thing is? Oh, I think she threw this Hail Mary, hoping that all the pieces would just fall into place and Dad wouldn't be such a jerk all of a sudden. What we need is a dozen therapists, not a party. I'm hoping there's some closure in this for your brother and your dad. The relationship haunts him. Why is your dad hiding in the other room? Is he planning something? No, he's hiding. He could never take criticism, but was always eager to give it. Amazingly, he loved the fact that Tom and I broke up because he was right. He was able to say, I told you so. How did your brother turn out to be so awesome when your dad is such a grump? Hmm. Maybe my mom had a one night stand with a nice guy. <laughs> Bad blood with the sister. It's easy to see. I'm sure Phil told you all about it. Not really. Well, I left home early. I hadn't seen her since she was 11. And then after all these years, she came back into my life. I was really happy about it. But it didn't take her long to start asking for money, money she didn't pay back. I then let her stay with me. But before I knew it, she started sneaking in her boyfriend while I wasn't home. I had to call the cops to get them out but not before things started going missing. Ouch. Yeah, that'd do it. I want to be friendly with her again, but she just brings these toxic people around. And I made a decision to cut toxic people out of my life. It's good for the spirit. It's good for the soul. She seems to go through boyfriends pretty steadily, so maybe this one won't last too long and you can mend fences. Hmm. Doubtful. You know, I'm surprised you're here. I'm sure there was an out for you somewhere. I can imagine that your family is having a gathering of some sort, and it's gotta be better than this. Not really. It's not like this, but it's pretty cold. Everyone going through the formalities, fulfilling their obligations, and then leaving. We're not at each other's throats. We're, we're just not close, even though we pretend to be. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. <laughs> yeah, you guys are heading to that bar still, right? Listen, I told you, you guys have to be there. I saved both of your jobs at one point. Are you kidding me? Are you really worried about the beers right now? Yes, I'll reimburse you for the beers. Really, dude? Whatever. Everything okay? Oh, yeah, no. No, everything's fine. Those are my two buddies. You know, they're heading to the local bar. You know, it's about five minutes up the road. I, I just wanted them to be there in case I needed a ride home. So, do you always wear your Santa costume? Kind of. You know, people always see me in it. You know, you just see the joy in their eyes. But when I finally meet my family tonight, you know, they're just gonna welcome me with open arms and someone is finally gonna welcome me into their happy family. I would love for you to be the first guy to convince me, just without all the hocus pocus. Hocus pocus? Yeah, the magical man in the sky explanation ain't much of one. Well, you're going into it with the wrong mindset. You've already dismissed it, so what's the point in even trying to state an argument? So you have no argument. Okay, I see how this is gonna go. Jeremy. <laughs> You really just have to look at this world, you know, how it operates and what it is, see some sort of design. You know, everything is working together in harmony. It's difficult to argue. There's not some sort of rhyme or reason to it. What have you say, Phil? I'm not here to convince you, Jeremy. It's up to you to believe. Just look at all the evidence and draw your own conclusions, but at least look at the evidence. I mean, does it even interest you to find out how this world ticks? Like, what's beyond it? You need to be more aggressive here. You know, you're supposed to shove it down their throat, Phil. Is, uh, isn't that uh, what the Bible pushers do? Well, that's the thing, Tom. I'm not here to push it on anyone. 
I enjoy discussing it, and if I can get someone to think that maybe there's more going on to this world than meets the eye, I'm happy. Well, don't you think the world would be a better place with that religion? Like, aren't there tons of wars and people dying because of that book you love so much, Phil? Yeah, well, yeah, I agree with you. I was raised Catholic. According to the church, I was doing everything wrong. You probably were, Dad. What? I always do the right thing, at least 50% of the time. Okay, here's the thing, sis. You know, we all have religions that we follow. You know, we're all just trying to look at everything we see and compute it. Now, I had a calling. You know, it just makes sense to me. I know that being Christian isn't very popular nowadays, but I believe that if you do the right things and are in tune with what he wants, it'll make your life better. So, sounds a lot like karma. Sure, yeah, same concept, different name. I agree with you 100%. I had karma happen right in front of my eyes. You know, when Kathy and I got divorced, she hired the biggest asshole on the planet. And this dude had the nerve to show up at my house. <sighs> Wasn't he delivering paperwork? I mean, he had a reason to be there. Yeah, no reason. Who delivers paperwork anymore? That's why we have email accounts. Anyways, this fat slob shows up at my house, right? And, and, and when I say slob, this freaking guy was enormous. They, they get the point, Dad. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Well, I have a lot more to say about that. Anyways, he, he shows up and he, and he hands me a manila envelope and he smirks at me. He, he looked at me like I was some kind of jerk. Well, he was representing my sister. She may not have exactly sung your praises. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Karma, karma, all right, where are we going, karma? Yeah, so he shows up, he hands me the, the, the paperwork, and, and then he falls down the stairs. <laughs> he, he, his tank ass goes head over heels down the entire flight of stairs. He's laying on the bottom of the stairs, winded, and he's just wheezing. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Now that, that is karma right there. <laughs> How exactly was that karma? Well, it was because he was, he was being a being an idiot, and, and, and his job was was being a home wrecker. So 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 Carmen bit him in the ass, or as Phil would say, God pushed him down the stairs. I wouldn't say that. I don't think he's a home wrecker. He was just doing his job. <laughs> doing his job. Doing his job. Hey, set your uncle straight there, son. He was only doing his job. <laughs> so Phil came back to the point here. Um, don't you think the world would be a better place without this God in the sky? You can live without God, and you can live without faith, but it's so much better if you don't. See, God is about family. He's about love. It's about coming together and seeing each other's hearts. And if you ask me to choose, I choose Christ at every turn. Oh, that's like one time. One time wow. I said it. Hello. Hi. Who are you? I'm Doug. Oh, that's your name, but who are you? Oh, right. Yeah, hold on. A couple days ago on the mail, I got this letter. It says I'm supposed to meet my family tonight, so we brought some gifts. You guys all have a fancy stocking up there. You see this one? This one's mine. It doesn't have my name on it, but I think you'll remember which it is. Oh, cookies for Santa. That's convenient. Hello, everybody. My name is Doug Bryce. And trust me, I know what you're thinking. You guys are probably assuming that I had some sort of relationship with your mother of this sexual nature. I promise that is not what happened. I wasn't thinking that for a second. Yeah, me either. Oh, that's good. You know, the whole drive here, I couldn't figure out exactly how to say it, and that's what I came up with, but I guess a better way to say it is, I'm the bastard child. 
I'm so happy to finally have a family. I've never had a family before. You know what they say, be careful what you wish for. The, the bastard son? So my father had another family then? No, 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 no. I, like I said, I never had a family before. From what I understand, uh, my mother was a bartender, although she left me too. Um, and your dad liked to go to the bars and they had sex and here we are. I'm Phil. It's my wife, Demi. Welcome to the jungle. I love that song. What do you want? You need to come down and join the party. I'm working on it. I'm finishing up some stuff and I'll be there as soon as I can. You need to come down and meet your bastard son. Jeanette. I just told your dad to come down and meet you. Sweet! Sweet might not be the word for it. Dad? You're just as I imagined. You're old and you're tall. Thank you. You're just gonna sit there? You're not gonna say anything? This is not an easy situation to explain, okay? I think I should go. This is a family matter. Oh, no, 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 you can't leave. We haven't even been introduced. I'm Allie. I'm Kristen. Nice to meet you. Are you guys married or dating? Oh, no. Um, I was just his ride here. No. I was gonna leave after I helped carry the booze. You don't have to go anywhere. There's food, you brought the booze, you might as well stay for the meal and entertainment. Okay, but if you want me to leave, I'm gone. I don't even know you, and I like you more than most of my family already. Thank you, I think. Why are you staring at me like that? We definitely have the same nose. Look, back off a little, will you? Speaking of nose, what's that thing under yours? It's called a mustache. Don't you like it? Looks like a couple of lizards crawled up there and died. But I don't have to look, and you don't have to stare at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I just never had a father. Count your blessings. I never had a family either. I can't wait to get to know every single one of you guys. Especially you, Dad. You can call me Richard. Richard, no. Your dad? Or your daddy? I'm going to get to know you, and you're going to get to know me, too. Look, if you have to call me dad, fine, but not daddy. And I'll get to know you someday in the future. Listen, I know this is a shock to everybody, and I'm going to explain it all. I had sex with someone other than your mother there. Oh. Great explanation, Richard. Were you really separated at the time? Yes. Well, that's good. She was home and I was in a motel. We were separate. Now that's funny. I don't see the humor in this at all. Why didn't you tell us you had another son? Why didn't we have to find out this way? I'm going to be a little crude. Is that going to bother anyone? I never stopped you before. Brian, block your ears. I'm 16. I've pretty much heard everything. OK, fine. Sexual relations with your grandmother were not the best. And when, after the kids came, she cut me off. I had needs. All right, it wasn't the right thing to do, but it happened. I, I really don't know how to explain this. Oh, you were creeping while she was sleeping. Well, there you go. I'm glad you see this as funny. I'm not amused. Mom obviously knew, and that's why Santa is here. How does that make you feel? Festive. Oh my God, I can't deal with you. Uh, 
what a great party this is. So awesome to see you all so happy. Wait, is that sarcasm? Mm. Yeah, see, this isn't exactly going according to plan. Yeah, I'll give you credit. You seem slightly more jovial than I've seen. But it's upsetting that it took you cheating on my mom to make you so happy. Precious memories, how they linger. Okay, now be in the other room. What an asshole. It's a generational thing, isn't it? No, it's an asshole thing. I think it's time for us to hit the road, Ellie. And I think we have to stay until midnight. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. It's not about you. If you want to leave, leave. Yeah, I'm definitely staying until midnight. I don't want to disappoint my mom. Your mother's dead. Thanks for the update, Jeremy. None of us knew that. You're in some sort of trouble, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. I can see it. Yeah, you do seem really nervous, man. This is that whole uh, Christmas depression thing, right? You know everybody kills themselves right around Christmas time. They hang like stockings. It's crazy, but it's true. I don't think you're helping. No? No. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Can we just drop this already? I will, but what's his rush? Is he in trouble? No, if he was, I would definitely know about it. I'll be right back. Who's in the car? That's her ex. The caveman? No, Sam's. S H I T head Sam. He's obsessed with her. Did he hurt her? Once. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. She dumped him, but clearly he hasn't gotten a picture. Right, I'm going out there. Me too. No, you're not. You're staying right there. Stay with you. <laughs> That's Barna. Kathy, this is silly. What's silly is you showing your face around here. We are done. You need to get in your car and get the hell out of here. What's going on? It's all right, Tom. I've got it under control. Yeah, whoever you are. Get lost. This is between us. You are the one that needs to get lost, Sam, and I mean now. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yes, you are. You're going, and you're going right now. I will ruin you. Get back in that house, or I'm going to kill you. Uh, call me crazy, but I don't think that's gonna happen. See, guys like you who hit women turn into total pusses when the fight's even. This is who you're cheating on me with, Kathy? Is this why you don't want me around anymore? I don't want you around because I despise you. You hurt her. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, you knocked him out! He knocked him out, guys! He knocked him out! I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, mister! Yeah, and your little dog, too. <laughs> oh, you can have that. Yeah, they'll look very pretty on me. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um. <clears throat> Do you, uh, do you have a minute? Well, let's see. It's about three hours to midnight, so I have several minutes. Would you, uh, would you like to take a walk, or...? Sure. Hey, Sianas. Would you guys like anything other than beer tonight? I mean, it is Christmas, and we do have pie. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. The beers will be just fine. You know how small Sam is, we don't make a great deal of money. Oh, well, I would never guess. She smiled at me. I think she has a thing for me. Dude, she gets paid to be nice to guys like us. That's how she makes her big bucks. How would you know if she was flirting with me, Isaac? Really? Yeah. 
She's drop dead gorgeous, and you're a fat mall Santa impersonator. Santas are fat. I fit the part. Uh, believe what you want, man. I'm just telling you. Don't get your hopes up, OK? You're negative. That's why you were suspended from work, that negativity stuff. You call one little kid a jerk, and all of a sudden, you're a jackass. Look, I'm sorry, but that kid had it coming. He peed on me, and he told me I wasn't the real Santa. He was seven years old. He was seven years old. You should have let it go. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. When did manners go out the window? <laughs> little turd had it coming. I haven't been out here in years, you know? Mm. I, think, uh, I think I was afraid of it. You know? Afraid? Yeah, I think I was afraid of getting slapped in the face with the memories, you know? It's like, think about it. Isn't it, isn't it strange that sometimes the happiest memories are going to be the ones that, that haunt you the most? Not strange at all. Huh. I understand. I mean, but meeting you here was the best. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I remember watching you walk down those stairs in front of that light and you had a, you had a Santa hat on. <laughs> I thought I'd never have a chance, but you gave me that chance. <laughs> you had on a great Christmas sweater. Yeah. You were hard to resist. You know, some of the some of the happiest times of my life happened during this season. I mean, you know, I, I, I met you in December. Right? Brian, Brian was born in December. Yeah. You know, I'm the one better with dates, remember? Uh, yeah. <laughs> God, that's, uh, I, 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 but I remember that day so vividly. It was, you know, it was just, it was magical. Not, not because we had a child and that it was, we brought something into this world that had never existed before, but that it was Christmas time. It, it was the only time in my life that, that I felt the true spirit of Christmas. I, I, I understood what it, meant to have the joy. That was a great day, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, I was thinking about coming home at night, late at night, you know, and uh, Brian would be up in his crib waiting for me. Mm -hmm. He'd be up because you had to be, because Brian wasn't going to sleep unless he had company. <laughs> mm -hmm. And him and I would just hang out all night, watching the stupid kid shows and movies that he loved. And, you know, yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, yeah, I screwed up. I screwed up royally. Shit. I, I mean, I see that. I didn't see it then, but I see that now, you know? Like, wow. Jeez. You weren't the only one who screwed up. Ah, uh, come on. We were dead in the water. I, I mean, I gave up. I, I had that whole woe is me thing going on. I mean, you were, you were working your career, and I was working late every night, and I was spent, and I just <laughs> thought maybe the grass was greener, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't happy either. I was so determined to be successful that I just lost sight of what we had. <clears throat> I, I, um... I, I got this crazy idea. See, I um, I, I know what we had, okay, and I, and I know, I, I know what I am without you, and and the second chances they, they don't they, they don't come along too often, and they never for me, you know. Um, but I figured it's, it's Christmas, it's almost Christmas, and and maybe that would help my chances a little bit. Are you asking me out? No, I'm, Kathy, I'm, I'm asking you to take me back. I, I'm, I, I swear to God, I, I won't hurt you again. I, I, I just want another go at it. Is that, is it like a, 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 a happy smile, yes smile, or is that like a get your ridiculous ass out of here smile? <laughs> Dude, two hotties over there are checking us out. Let's go. I heard playing hard to get is pretty good. Playing hard to get? You go do that. I'm gonna go talk to him. 
two Santas walk a little bar. Isn't that a joke of some sort? Oh, it is. I forget the punchline, but I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with the Pope. You're funny. What's your name? Well, I'm Isaac. This is Bob. This is Diana. And I'm Jenny. Hey, guys. Are you Santa's helpers that we're all hearing about? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's just a joke. Don't listen to him. He's being modest. Of course we're those Santas that everyone's talking about. But we don't do it for the fame. We do it for the children. Wow. The children. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. I was thinking, we're going to a big party tonight. I don't know what you guys are doing, but it would be pretty cool to bring two Santas with us. Hell yes. Hell yes. Hell Please. yes. Excuse us for a second. I have to go talk to my friends. Dude, why are we here? To drink. No, you half a meatball. We're here for Doug, remember? Oh, uh, yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's two reasons why we can't go to the party. Any particular shot in the dark you want to take? To help Doug? Yes, and? Erectile dysfunction? What? No. Well, I mean, yes and no, but... Which, which one yes, which one no? Oh, dude, shut up. Just shut up, okay? Look, those two girls over there would never go for two guys like us. The only reason why they want to bring us to the party is so they can do nasty things to us. Not like that, idiot. Nasty things. Oh. Things that we wouldn't like. Oh, oh, oh. They want to do nasty, mean girl things. Oh. Mean girl. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over there, we're going to let them down easy, and then we're going to go continue to drink and wait for Doug, okay? Ladies, regretfully, we have to decline your offer, but we appreciate it. Okay. And you're not going to have no frat guys paddle our asses either. Oh, darn. Well, that ruins that. Merry Christmas, ladies. What the hell is going on? How did you see that? elbows in. Your punches are way too wide. What, are you a boxer? No, my dad was. Show me some moves. Tommy! 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 Yes. You guys are holding hands. What's going on? This would probably be a good time for an announcement. What do you think? Well, you're the man of the hour. Why not? Alrighty, folks. Well, please do not worship me for my awesome display out there, as Phil would say. Not to worship false idols, but I'm not false, baby. I'm the real deal. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, no, seriously. Um. So, I've made a made a, a bad decision in my life a couple of years ago, and uh, because of this warm-hearted woman standing to my left and the magic of Christmas, um, I get a second chance. So we are back together again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Grandma said this would happen. She said that the Christmas magic would bring you two back together. What else did she say? Just that everything would be fixed by midnight. That, that the family would be right and, and all the bad blood would be gone. Hmm. Allie. Yeah? Can I speak with you? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Cool? Yeah, wicked cool. Oh, what's up? I am sick and tired of being angry with you. In life, 
You have to do what makes you happy. And holding on to this anger is stopping me from being happy. Well, I want you to be happy. Look, I really thought I was gonna have this huge hit and be able to pay you back and then some, but in reality, I'm not you. I can't make everything work so perfectly. You think I do everything perfectly? Obviously I do. Look at you. You're tough, successful, beautiful. Look at me. I live in a shithole and I'm lucky if I eat. There's a saying that an artist will never understand a non-artist and vice versa. You have that in your heart. Your instincts are telling you to chase that dream and you should. Thank you for saying that. Look, I'm really ashamed of everything that I put you through and what I did. I want to make up with the family. I want to be able to pay you back. It's okay. You don't need to pay me back. As I put the pieces of my life back together, I want you to be part of my life. I want you in it. I'm done judging you. Is everything okay in here? We're just ironing some things out. Oh, that sounds like it could be violent. It's not. Kathy, can I hug you? Of course, come here. Get in here, bro. What the hell is going on tonight? I think Mom has something to do with it. Well, she did send out the invitations. No, like she's up in heaven, looking down at us. She has something to do with this remarkable night. You know, nothing could ruin tonight. Officers, hi. What can I do for you? Hey, sir, we're looking for Jeremy Nelson. We have a warrant for his arrest. Is he here? Uh, that's my boyfriend. What is this about? Can we come in? Yeah, sure. Jeremy Nelson? That's me. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. Wait, why are you arresting him? You want to tell her, big boy, or should I? I knew it. You didn't think you'd realize it was gone. Oh, why would you do this? Oh, you wanted to come to this party. Oh, you're so go. stupid. Move. on your birthday. Hey, I don't want to kick you while you're down, but he's not a good guy. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you stay with me? It'll give you some time to get your head together. You really let me do that? Of course. We're family and it's Christmas. <laughs> You better watch it, people. You're really starting to resemble a happy family. <laughs> there you go. See, now, now we're going in the right direction here, right? <laughs> All right, let's play some music. Let's do something here. <laughs> you mind if I cut in? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, big boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. They got a little monster stuff. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> oh,
Hello, Richard. How you doing? I've had better nights. Um, Merry Christmas. And to you. What's going on? Nothing. There's a party in there with my family. Uh, that's not nothing. Uh, if they're in there, what are you doing out here? It's a long story. Well, my wife made a pot of coffee. Why don't you come on in? We can have a chat. No, thanks. Family conflict, right? Well, sometimes talking to family is difficult. Why don't you come on over? We can have a chat with a friend. I never thought of us as friends. I thought our wives were friends, and you and I are just neighbors. <laughs> yeah, of course we're friends. And uh, to be honest with you, my wife tells me I've got good advice, even if it's only one out of 10 times. With odds like that, how can I refuse? Doug, good call on the beers, brother. My pleasure, Phil. I'm sorry I had to see some of the dirty laundry this family has. I'm guessing we didn't make a good first impression on you, or you, Kristen. I'm having a great time. I'm just surprised you let me in the door. You really are all awesome before welcoming me. I'm happy I hung out, and this party really kicked it into gear. Yeah, it'll kick into gear once we open up that whiskey you brought there, Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't help but wonder what Mom's thinking. Do you think we did what she wanted us to do? The fact that we all showed up would probably have been enough for her. She was right. There is magic in this holiday. And there is love left in this family. I can't tell you all how happy I am that I came here tonight. Hmm. Well, I meant to ask you, Brian, how much of this was your idea? Well, it was Grandma's, I guess. I mean, she started talking about what Christmas was like when she was a kid and how her family was. And I just kept thinking about Christmas Eve with Dad and Christmas with Mom. And that just didn't feel like Christmas to me. I mean, Christmas is family, right? Of course it is. And Grandma thought that the last time we would all see each other was at her funeral. And she didn't want that. I'm sorry, Brian. For what? For being distant. I mean, for me, and I can probably speak for the rest of the group here, it was easier just to stay in our bubble. This family has been so dysfunctional, it was easier just to stay away. And that's not fair to you. You deserve to have what most other people have. You need your family. I think we all need each other. You got that right. This is just a great new beginning for all of us. We're going to start having the holidays together all the time. I won't take no for an answer. I can attest to that. You guys just got yourselves into a lot of barbecues and games of cards. Oh. Yeah. Hey, we open up that whiskey there, we're gonna have a real party. Yeah. Yeah. They have bats. Call the police. No. What do you mean, no? That's enough cops for tonight. I got something better to call. Hold on. Hey, you guys still at the bar? I need you guys here in five minutes. It's time to kick some ass. Well, Dougie, who'd you call? Don't worry about it. It's a Christmas surprise. Hey. You don't know what he's got. Yeah. Let's go get him. Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! Here's the season two! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, 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 bitches! Somebody made the naughty list, didn't they? Come on, guys! <laughs> Is this really happening? It is Christmas. You can trust me, Rich. I see that hesitation in your face. I screwed up, okay? I have screwed up so many things. 
Everybody screws up. We're people. People make mistakes. I was abusive. I abused my wife. I abused my kids. I abused everyone. I was an alcoholic and I was drinking. And everybody in that house hates me. And they should. They hate me, rightfully so. If they hated you, why are they there now? Maybe to tell me to walk into oncoming traffic. Or maybe to give you a second chance. They've all taken turns telling me to shove it. That's, that's part of it. What do you mean that's part of it? When my daughter got married, it was a real prize. I, I hated the guy and I let it get in our way. I didn't talk to her for 10 years. I lost 10 years with my daughter. Luckily, my wife forced us to sit down together and it started out with a lot of yelling. She called me every name in the book and rightfully so. But then after the yelling came hugging and crying and now we have the best relationship ever. I made mistakes just like you did. No, not like me. That's small potatoes compared to me. I don't think they're gonna welcome me into their lives no matter what I say. But you won't know and, until you give them a chance. So what if I do? What if I give it my all and they still tell me to go to hell? Then what have you got to lose? You're right back where you started from. Think about it, Rich. Do you want to spend the rest of your life alone? Do you want to go to your grave with all that hatred in your heart? No, I think God's given you a second chance here. And I, I've got to believe that you know, God's got a happy ending in this for you. Well, I want to say something to you, Evan. I want to say something. You are my friend. We are friends. I just, I didn't realize it. I've been hiding so long that I didn't realize I have a good friend. And I'm sorry about that. You don't have to be sorry to me. You have a whole family over there to apologize to. You know, whatever hatred you have left in that heart, you exercise it tonight. You have a right to be happy. Why, you're the key to your family's happiness. And when the going gets tough and you want to run out of there, take a breath and you stay right there. This is your one chance. Follow your heart, Rich. Damn it. How does he keep winning? Play again. It's Play insane. Again. Play again. Try again. Lose again. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now there are three Santas. Yeah, Dad. This is Bob and Isaac. They're my best friends. What's up? Hello? Uh, Phil, just tell me we're not related. Phil, could I talk to you a moment, please? What do you want? I'd like a minute of your time, if you'll just give me that. Okay. Here, have a seat. I never wanted to have children. Thanks, I appreciate that. I'm going back to no, the No, 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 wait, please. Hear me out, will you? I never wanted to have children because I thought that I couldn't be a good father, and you know I wasn't. I feel bad that I never shared anything with you or Kathy or Allie. I just drank, and then I drank some more. And I want to tell you some things now about myself and my life, it, and I'm hoping you will let me. Why me? Well, you're the diehard Christian. I thought my chances were best with you. Nice work out there. Very impressive how you handled those jerks. It's what we do, baby. We bring Christmas cheer and we kick some butt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? Really, really, really sing.
No. No, not gonna happen. Hey, dude, wait a minute. Hold on. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. What's going on, man? Why are we leaving the party? Dude, what's wrong? Why are you leaving the party? I mean, they got booze, food, I mean, music. I mean, they seem pretty nice. They nice? Nice? You see the way she shut me down? Why? Just why? Oh, why? Bob, why? you can't let that get to you. She's married. Bob? Oh, come on, Bob. There's a price to pay for giving up on a dream. There's a cost. When I was young, I was going to be a songwriter. I was writing songs. And they were beginning to move a little. My friends that had bands were playing my stuff. Allie is a musician because of me. She has my blood in her veins. That's who I was. That's who your mother met. I had this dream that I would travel the globe and see everything the world has to offer. And then I was a father. And your mother was a nurse. And I gave up. I gave up all of that. And I held it against you. And I held it against your sisters. This is very hard to say. I'm not judging you. Please go on. The funny thing is I vowed never to be like my father. Just like you vowed never to be like me. But you did it. You're stronger than I am. You're, you're a better person. We all have our faults. You learn how to be a man because I wasn't one. You were smart enough not to follow my example. I'm weak and I'm jealous and I blamed you. I blamed you and I blamed Kathy and Allie. I was supposed to be successful. And when it didn't happen, I, it was way too much for me to blame myself. You kids didn't force me to give up on my dreams. I gave up on them as soon as things got complicated. Where was this father all these years? Where are these songs you wrote? Where the hell were you? I was at the bottom of a bottle. Woe is me, poor me. Those are words I lived my life by. And it's a miserable way to live. It's miserable. There's always time to change. I want you to know that I forgive you. It took a lot of courage for you to come to me like this. What about Kathy and Allie? I'm afraid to talk to them. Be honest. Tell them the truth. They want closure, and if they get harmony out of it, even better. I think it's time to join the party, Dad. Damn. How do you make up for 40 years in one night? You don't. It's gonna take you being honest and letting that love drive all the anger and jealousy out of your body. This is what mom wanted. This was her Christmas wish. And you have the power to make it come true. This has been one hell of a night so far. And I know my dad hasn't won anyone over, but he has something that he wants to say and I want all of you to listen, right? Many people at my stage in life 
have a goal. They want to be remembered. I never had that goal. I just wanted to disappear. I was content with just dying alone because it was easier. It was easier than facing the truth. I welcome death. And when your mother died, I wanted it to come sooner than later. I didn't treat her well. I didn't treat you kids right. I don't deserve your understanding or your forgiveness now, but I'm making this plea to you. I've been so hidden behind this wall that I put up for so many years. And tonight, the wall began to crumble when I saw all of you forgiving each other and loving each other and showing me what family was supposed to be. Kathy, you must wonder why I treated you so bad as you were growing up. I was afraid of you. Afraid of me? I was afraid of you. I'm not proud of it, but I saw your fire and I wanted to put it out because I wanted that kind of ambition. I, I wanted your toughness and because I didn't have it, I didn't want you to have it. I'm so sorry for how I treated you. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve a daughter like you. You're better than I am. I, I looked up to you and it scared me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Richard. not okay. I don't know what I was doing all those years. It's not okay. Can we, can we just start over? Please. Ellie, I didn't treat you much better. I just ignored you. I couldn't support you and help you with your dream. Because if you succeeded, it would mean I would be more of a failure. I'm so sorry. I want you to know now that I want nothing more than for you to chase and catch that dream. You write your songs and get them out there in the world. You are all heart. You are all heart. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Daddy. I forgive you. Well, that leaves you, Doug. Me? <laughs> you were a mistake. I, uh, a product of my selfishness. But you're here now, and I welcome you, my son. And what's that to, Daddy? Well, I want a relationship, and I hope we can have it. And don't call me Daddy. <laughs> you can call me Dad, but not Daddy, please. <laughs> oh, I, I gotcha. It's that whole who's your daddy thing, isn't it? No, but if it's easier for you, then okay, it's that whole who's your daddy thing. Come here. Come here, dad. Oh. Sis, come on. <laughs> come on, both of you. <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. I can't wait to know everything about you. And I'm gonna tell you everything about me. I bet you have a million questions for me, don't you? A million might be stretching it. <laughs> Come here, Dad. No. <laughs> and Kristen. You know, this has been the perfect night. Would you come out on a date with me? I was actually waiting for that. I'm a sucker for a guy in Santa suit. Really? Everyone always tells me I look like an idiot. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Huh. <sighs>
Time for uh, thanks, there, Phil. It's always time, Tom. Yeah, about a few words after everybody from the man upstairs. We think. Uh, I don't think everyone wants to hear that. Yeah, of course they do. Look at there, there's a miracle that happened here tonight. Everybody knows that. Look at me. Hey, can I have your attention, please? Attention, please. My brother-in-law would like to say a few words. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh. Everyone, I have a hard time seeing the events of tonight and not seeing some sort of miracle. Seeing the redemption and forgiveness, seeing how the magic of Christmas can change the world. Now, I'm not asking you to believe what I believe, but I would like to say this prayer. Thank you, God, for this night. Thank you for healing this family and giving us the opportunity to make things right. We thank you for this Christmas miracle. And mom, I know you're looking down on us right now, and we did it. We are a family again. I've never had a better Christmas gift than this. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Oh, Phil, that was awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, it might be time for you to say a few words there, buddy. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I'll give it a go, I guess. Um, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> God, uh, I, I have heard of your miracles, and uh, I, I got to say that uh, I haven't been totally convinced. Uh, but uh, the impossible did happen tonight and I know that I've screwed up a lot in my life and it, it, it took this day it, it took this night it took it took this party to make everything right and you know Christmas is the time where people are just a little bit more loving right and people are just a little bit more understanding of each other <laughs> And I, I mean, my son, he forced me to come to this party, but I, uh, Brian, I gotta tell you, I, I, I love you. I love you and I, I love you and, and thank you. And, 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 and you were right, you were right. It, this is where I belong. So I just wanna say, I wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas and much love to everyone in this room. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Ah, hey. oh, jeez, another Christmas party. You think we really need the invites? I think everyone's going. I know. I just promised Grandma I would carry on. So I need stamps. Hey, what's going on? Well, apparently he needs stamps to send out the Christmas invites. Maybe we should do an email or social media thing from now on? That's not how Grandma wanted it. She wants snail mail. 
<laughs> okay, I will get you some stamps then. Excited? Excited? What, to dress up like an elf? Why would I be so excited? Come on, it's the best time of the year. Look at all the smiling kids. You know, it reminds me every single year how you have to enjoy life. You know, when you put it that way, you're right. Plus, I appreciate this opportunity and the extra cash in my pocket. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, now where's my second elf? He might be a little scared and embarrassed to come out. What do you mean? Elf 2, get out here. Elf 2, get out here now. I'm Santa, I am your boss. I need you here right now. Dad, I'm so happy you agreed to do this. Well, that makes one of us. Come on now, turn that frown upside down. Now say it. No. You have to say it, Dad. No, I won't. You have to say it. No. Say it, say it, say it. <sighs> if you do not say it, you will not get your minimum wage paycheck. And you're going to make every single kid here cry. Now say it. <sighs> say it, say it, say it. Girls and boys, I'm Ricky the Elf. Welcome to the North Pole. Get ready for Santa and Merry Christmas. Dad, this is the best Christmas ever. Waiting all year for my Christmas gifts, making a list. Shiny, wrapped up in a bow, something just for me, baby, you're my wish. <laughs> what my heart is longing for now, what I really want to see, what I really want underneath my Christmas tree, getting caught up in the sky.
last New Year's Eve, Santa always comes at night, Santa always comes at night.